Well, that 2020 Tundra isn't going to go as planned. We are putting it back together and lock our tech is going to drive it over here to the fabrication portion of wired customs and well we're gonna have to do what we did on the last one which i totally didn't think about we've already done one of these we had to fiberglass the floor so we're just gonna have to do that it's gonna be a pain in the ass way more work than what the client paid for but at this point it's on me it's not on him it's not his fault the deal was the deal at the price we came to i as a honest custom store owner cannot call him and ask him for more money because that's not ethical to me now your other place is going to call them and state our original plan won't work. We're going to have to fiberglass. It's going to cost another two grand. That's what they're going to tell them. I'm not going to do that. And I'll have this customer for 10 more years. That's just the truth. It's going to have to fiberglass the floor. So this is going to start off with a little light. A little light we're gonna hang our little camera up and get going the very first thing we're going to do is clean the floor because the floor even though it's brand new it probably has armor all on it and stuff like that i'm positioning our light here in place can you look at the floor pretty good there i think you can okay we're gonna grab some cleaner i don't have the best light but All right, guys, we're gonna scoot the truck back. It's in my way. Some stuff's in my way, so hang tight. All right, now I can open this door up completely and we're gonna spray some acreosol a cree a saw to clean the floor and actually let me spray it with an air hose before i All right, so now that we have the floor completely clean, completely clean, and we sprayed it with the air hose to get all the creases that that rag can't get the liquid out from, because it is imperative that this um, painter's tape sticks well. We don't want it coming off because that will mess up our form of the floor especially in this truck here it's got some what i would call protruding uh plastic right here and i'm gonna go on top of this that way it molds on top of it i don't want it to go in between it and definitely don't need any resin sticking to that plastic yes so we're gonna grab our three inch painters tape if i have any three if not it'll be two inch and we're going to adequately uh, lay the floor two different two layers one going one way and the other going the other way overlapping each other and then we'll lay down some chop mat and some resin and get the 
the the mold of the floor and let that dry pop it out and start adding our wood pieces and then bring it out to the table and then fiberglass it all together and then body fill it and then wrap it in carpet it's a long process which is why an enclosure like this would normally cost around two thousand dollars and i think i charged seven hundred all right guys i did in fact have three inch three inch painters tape i'm gonna scoot this chair up that way it's out of my way Totally out of my way now. I can scoot up in here and work freely. Guys, I had a telephone call. I had to hang up. We're gonna get back to taping. The pain in my butt. I hate it. I hate it. Und 
The entire floor is now taped. We're about to break out the fiberglass and do the floor. Forgot the most important part. So we're gonna add wax to the floor now. Can't believe I almost forgot that. We're gonna draw a line where we want to cut after it's dried with this, and then we're going to wax it.
got the first layer. Actually, technically, that's two layers of fabric gloss down. Because I always start with two layers to begin with. And it's, uh, I forget the, the, the thickness of it, but it's like four, four of the small um, layers stacked up as one. So that's basically eight, eight layers right now. Probably um, not a quarter inch, probably three eighths of an inch. Right now, we're gonna let that dry and then we'll do another layer. That'll be strong enough where I can pop it out and not have it lose its form. Then we'll bring it over here and start cutting some wood and then conjoin it all together. It's a long process, which is why it would normally cost at least $2,000. Hey guys, we have the truck on and the heater on. It is a little bit chilly here in Texas and fiberglass does not do well uh, in the cold. So what we're doing is warming up the cabin. That way it can hurry up and dry that fiberglass. Now, there will be a, a slight smell for about uh, probably less than two weeks. There's no way around it. That's just part of, part of the custom world. Turning on this heater, everything's now dry. It was having a problem drying and it's only been running for 15 minutes. So it's now hard. We're gonna add another layer. Round three, we got the heater on. It's gonna hang out there for about 15 minutes and dry that fiberglass. And then we'll be able to pop that thing out. All right, I just cut the rear piece. Forgot to get some content, but I just measured it appropriately. And then we have the rear panel in, in a small notch, because at the rear there is a, still a little hump. This front part's gonna have a large hump. That's why we have the fiberglass right there. That hump is huge. So what we're gonna do is plan accordingly to go about an inch and a half less than the height of where the chair hits, which is a little under nine inches. So we're gonna cut that front panel at seven and a half. That'll bring it an inch and a half less, and that'll be plenty of room for excursion. And that way the chairs don't hit the surround of the speaker as it's traveling. This is the notch, there'll be three inches in it gradually increases to five inches and we're going to cut this area out right now and that'll be the front panel all right on the front panel we have it notched out already right here it does not need to be pretty because we're going to be adding fiberglass to it. it does not have to be perfect at all that's why this is not perfect right so the passenger is half as tall as what the driver is that i did not know so we're gonna have to adjust and make a cut from here all the way to that corner because that corner over there is already the perfect height. It needs to be straight. So we're going to put a piece of wood right here, use that as our template and use our router to make it a perfect cut on the top. That way when we screw in our top panel that holds the speakers in, the baffle, everything is straight and perfect and screwed in and tight, even though it's gonna be fiberglass. This front panel is complete. So this is our height right here, which is about an inch and a half less than right here. And over there, it's it's equally, it's exactly an inch and a half for uh, the clearance of the speaker's travel. So now, now we're gonna put those panels in place and glue them in temporarily and then pop that whole piece out as one panel. Hopefully it all comes out um, with no problems. And then we'll do the corners and everything like that. So I haven't touched it yet. We're gonna show you guys how easy or, or hard this thing is to pop out. So let's try it. Because it's not always easy at all. A lot of times it's stuck in there and we have to blow compressed air um, or manhandle it. A lot of times we have to manhandle it, honestly. But it looks like it's moving already, which is great. Because if, if you notice, I used a ton of wax. That wax is what is helping us out right now, is that wax.
So what happens is it creates a, a suction up in there and makes it hard to come out. It's not that it's like fiberglass to the floor. It's that there's a uh, pressure up against it. So that's what it is. Oops. Sorry. But because it's moving, it's going to be easy. There's been a couple times where it took hours to get these things out. I'm going to probably have to use two hands here. Kind of hard using one hand. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. All right. It's coming out. Try to do it in one piece. Whew. That's the mold. That's the floor. Now we're going to clean it up uh, and then trim it, stick it back in place after it's completely cured. Because once I pull off this tape off the bottom, it's going to be a little bit wet still. So we'll let that dry before we stick it on that carpet. If you notice, I don't use gloves for this part because I can't explain it, but it just doesn't screw, screw with my skin or anything. I'm non-reactive to fiberglass. And it's been like that for years. So we're gonna pull all this tape off, trim it, cut it, stick it in place, and then I'll uh, show you guys the attachment process. If you recall, the floor has those four little pieces of plastic coming up and we fiberglass around those. This is them right here. There's one, two, and it's basically holes over here that's going to allow them to uh, still grab the floor properly and that's actually going to help hold it in place too there's going to be no need to screw this down it's going to be uh, a perfect fit that's why fiberglass is a great option it's not the generally the number one option it's never the number one option because it's a lot of work as you can tell i'm probably three to four hours in on this right now and we still have another four to five, maybe six hours left. All right, guys, we're going to glue, temporarily glue the front and the rear panel on by using some CA glue and some activator to activate the glue. That's gonna hold it in place just enough for me to pull it out manually and not lose um, how the pieces are in there. It's very, very important. I've, I have attached panels out on the table and there's always a problem doing it like that so we, this is very very important process here need some light on the situation add some hot glue to get the spots that aren't directly on the floor i don't want to pick this up and it break apart so it's strong but there was only like three attachment points on each panel which isn't a lot so i'm gonna plug in the hot glue gun warm that up and then shoot a bunch of glue on it to temporarily hold it while i pick it up <laughs> Alright guys, Mark here. <laughs> it's another day. I'm starting the top portion of this fiberglass enclosure. And then we're going to cut the two tins out. And we are not going to port it for multiple reasons. 
All right, so I initially was thinking we were gonna have to stack speaker and speaker, but I do have enough space. I do have enough uh, height to go speaker and speaker to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. check to double check this speaker will squeeze in there properly needs just a small amount more just a hair which can be uh, manually done uh, with a little sandpaper. I would rather it be extremely tight than a little bit too loose. All right, so as you can tell, there's a gap right there and a gap right there where I cut the notch a little bit too large. What we're going to do is use this method right here. We're gonna stack a bunch of these up where it will make that part flat. And then we're gonna go in with some fiberglass and fiberglass it together. This will keep the shape that it needs to be temporarily. This will keep our, uh, will keep it flat originally and give it a little bit of structure. And then the fiberglass, and then, and then the fiberglass is what's gonna really hold it together. It's gonna be strong. All right, guys, this is what I was describing. These are all lined up and glued in place. We're going to now add some resin and some chop mat to that. And we'll get it around a quarter inch thick, which is strong. Fiberglass is extremely strong. Like this uh, bottom portion here before I put all that other stuff on it you could probably stand on it and it would not break. So.
for the dip I don't hold back on this new fly But I can get fly, I'm fly, fly Fly, I'm fly, fly I can get fly, I'm fly, fly Fly, I'm fly, fly I can get fly, I'm fly Fly, I'm fly, I can All right, we got the top on The front, the back Right, left Right now it in. We even added some screws. I don't use screws very often, but I wanted uh, I wanted to use screws here. So we're about to trim off this um, extra material here, all the way around it. Then we're going to add what's called Dyna glass. It's it's kind of like Bondo, but it's with. Uh, strands of fiberglass so it's great for for stuff like this it's perfect for stuff like that because it's stronger than body filler that's next all right guys i think i'm pretty much complete with it right there uh, we're gonna carpet this. I was gonna spray it with Rhino liner, but uh, we're gonna carpet it. Probably add some bracing um, right here. And bracing right here. Because it's a long panel and we don't want that panel to uh, re reverberate, I believe is the proper term. We have reached the wrapping stage. We're going to wrap this in black carpet. We're going to do this in one piece, not multiple pieces. Carpet can be stretched accordingly in almost every instance. We uh, have specific cuts that we can create, which make it pretty easy. That's it. Good? Yep. Still clearance. Plenty of clearance. 